Welcome back. Thought I would do a teardown, not an unboxing, of a tool I own and use regularly. I've not seen anybody do a teardown of this guy yet. See how it works. The magical machine that drills oval holes. The best tool domino. There she is, men. The envy of every schoolboy. The magic machine that makes a woodworker out of anybody. She is in perfect working order. The little drilly bitty thingy. It's a pretty small one. This machine takes a lot bigger ones. But what I want to see, if we can get into her, is what makes her work and how this little guy works like that. For those of you who like the techie stuff, it's got this annoying Festool only proprietary plug on it. I guess if you got a lot of Festools, Festools, Festool tools, Festi, what do you call it? Fest, Festipus. If you got a lot of Festipuses, then you probably have a lot of these cords and maybe could interchange them. Kind of annoying that they did that though. Probably buy a knockoff on Amazon and it'll probably work for a week. This end of it, we don't really need to uh, take apart. Interesting thing on this part, the adjustment up and down can actually cam. It's not totally rigid. You could actually get this thing at a slight angle. It's happened to me. And. If you look at, say, this older DeWalt biscuit joiner, it's got a leg up on good old Festool. It's got a rack and pinion here. See the teeth on both sides? There's a gear underneath there. Rack and pinion that moves this thing up and keeps it parallel. Now, what do you want to bet DeWalt's got a patent on that? Let a uh, good old Festi, Fest Tools, Fest, Fest Toolsels, plural of Fest Tools, Festool Company, the good old Germans, wouldn't let them get in on that action, but it's way nicer adjustment on the old DeWalt biscuit joiner than on that one. So aside from that, I don't really need to take apart this front end. Let's get into the meat of her and see what's there. Inside, what do we got here? We've got switch up here. The switch has got a direct connection to the actual switch, surprising. And you can tell by the size of these wires that this is just telling something in the computer to turn off and on. It's not actually switching the mains power. Mains power come in here, go down into a board. Let's see if we can get down here. Yo, uh -oh. got to look back at the video and see where that came from. Now this thing costs about 1500 US so you better believe I'm gonna get it back together and working properly now in, under the plastic cover which for you super nerds PA6 GF 30 glass fiber 30% so tough case Could withstand some dropping now this tool is not a tool I would drop or slam down intentionally. This is meant to be precise. I use this precisely when I use it. Can I say precise a few more times? It's precisely precise. So no, I wouldn't be slamming this one down. Don't want to knock any of the thingamajiggers out of whack. And <laughs> $1,500, and it might upset the Germans. Wow, that is a complex gearbox on top of this thing. Well, let's look at the motor back here. 
some nice brush holders there. Those are solid metal, none of this stamped brass business. A big spring, coil spring holding the brushes in. So nice replaceable brushes. It does have the cheesy little clip thingy that's could vibrate loose, I suppose, but probably won't. Looking back here, you got the circuit board is fully, fully potted in epoxy. Keep everything from vibrating loose. So that does your switching. Now this is interesting because this is a single speed machine. So it's doing something there. I'm not sure I want to take that whole motor out of there. You can see a hint of epoxy down on the windings there. I'm sure there's more. It's German. Of course it's totally legit. So let's see about this gearbox. What are the chances I open this thing up and everything goes boing? For you guys, let's do it. Every fastener on here is a Torx. I really just want to see how the transmission goes from the motor to turning and wiggling the cutting end down there. Now this gearbox is all cast aluminum alloy of some sort. I've not seen any markings yet on it. Uh, because of the pattern on the surface, I'm guessing there's a high zinc content in whatever that is. Looks like zinc to me. Top of it is PA66 glass fiber reinforced 50%. So this is going to be a little tougher, but I'm guessing when it gets to that higher percentage, it gets a little more brittle but it's probably stiffer, which you'd need to retain all these gears, I'm guessing, are under here. All right, place your money. Is it gonna go boing, or am I gonna be able to get this back together? Let's crack her open. Oh, do you hear the German angels singing? Don't wanna lose these screws. Oh, not bad. So we've got some cheap grease. Not much of it, it's all just kind of sitting there, not really getting used. I suppose when it gets warmed up more, it'll get melted in. All right here you can see this part of the drive. Motor's turning, this turns, bit turns, but it's not doing the wiggle waggle. This here controls the wiggle. Okay, so pretty simple mechanism actually. One more gear under here would connect this gear to this gear, and these are all inside there. Let's see, inside there we have some needle roller bearings inside the gear. Inside that one, same thing. That's pretty high quality right there, roller bearings. You almost would have thought these would have just been on bushings inside here. And for the life of me, I cannot see any machining marks on these, so they're probably a powdered, centered metal. Interesting thing about that is when they do the powdered metal, they mix in about 25% other material that ends up burning up, melting away in the end. So these things are 25% porous on a microscopic layer so the grease and oil can really soak into them and they're almost self lubricating at that point. So this leather selects your different cut widths. So there's your shallow, there's your, your wider cut for the different size tenons. It just swings the gear in but it's moving in or out on this kind of cam lever here, so it swings it further or more shallow. Again, it's another needle roller bearing that rides in this guide down here. So again, I would have almost guessed that would be just some sort of bronze bushing riding on something, but no, those crafty Germans, they've got an actual 
roller bearing riding in this guide at the bottom. So that selects your cut width. Alright, got that little spring back in there. Yeah, that made me nervous. You know, if I was rich as people think YouTubers are, I've been doing this a couple weeks, and I think I've made almost enough money to pay for the electricity to charge my phone to do this video. So yeah. But that is impressive right there. I suppose I should go deeper. All right, if you guys want to see further into this machine, leave some comments below, let me know, or else I'm not going to risk digging in any deeper on a tool that I need to work. Don't forget to subscribe, see what I'm up to next, and uh, thanks for watching.